can I beat Borderlands, Borderlands 2, Borderlands the pre-sequel, and Borderlands 3 without dying a single time? Obviously the answer is uh, yes, it is perfectly possible to do. But the real question is, do I have the patience, skills, and knowledge to do it? Probably not. Here are the rules. I have to play through Borderlands 1, 2, the pre-sequel, and 3 in order without dying a single time. This includes true and ultimate Vault Hunter mode. If I die, I have to start over at Borderlands 1. A death only counts if it is at the hands of an enemy, so driving off a cliff doesn't count, but blowing myself up with a barrel while in a fight does count. Rule number two, I can't use any weapons obtained from the golden chest or from any other save files. I mean, I, I can still use the chest, I just can't use the items in the fight. Now, rule number three, DLCs and side quests are optional. The only required side quest is uh, Shoot Me in the Face from Borderlands 2, for obvious reasons. With these three rules, can I beat the entire Borderlands series, excluding Tales from the Borderlands, without dying a single time? Who's getting off the bus? I started up a new game and chose Lilith, because she is, of course, the tankiest character of the four. You serious? While on my way to Firestone, a weird lady spoke to my brain and told me to do some things. Start making your way off the bus. It's still moving, dummy. I made my way off the bus, met Claptrap, unfortunately, and started my adventure. I climbed a building, stole someone's weapons, shot Claptrap, and started slaughtering the locals. After that, I met Dr. Zed, who thanked me for helping the town. Damn bandits won't leave us alone. They had to lock the place up tight. It's just you, Zed. There's there's no us. You are alone. I killed some bandits, killed some skags, killed some more bandits, and then met the best character of the entire franchise. You! One more step and it'll be your last! <laughs> you should've seen the look on your face! <laughs> Get it? Cause he's blind. Then I killed some more skags, then some more skags, then TK sent me on the biggest mission of my career. I'd been dreading this fight from the moment the run began, 25 minutes ago. If the run was going to end, it was going to end here. The bandit three balls was the only thing standing between me and victory. The only question was, had I prepared enough for this fight? Was I ready? I wasn't sure. There was only one way to find out, so with fear and anticipation eating away at me, I ran into the room and confronted three balls. That was a close one. With my biggest challenge now out of the way, I returned to TK, did some gardening for him, stole his leg, found someone's sex tape, and returned to Firestone. Scooter had me shoot a guy in the face in exchange for cars, Shep had me shoot a guy in the face in exchange for a key, and I used that key to go to the headstone mine. Now, jokes aside, Sledge was the first major challenge of the run. If it was going to end, this time, for real, it would be here. But I knew I'd prepared well. After killing all of its bandits, I entered his crib, threw in all of my grenades, and ran in with my phase walk. I easily killed Sledge and stole the first piece of the vault key. Okay, that, uh, I knew that that hurt, but that really hurts. Alright, bait it out. Or, I could not... Where bad guy? Bad guy, please. Please, bad guy. Uh, where bad guy be? There bad guy be. Please die. Do me a favor and just... Oh my god, I have to re- mm. Okay. So- And so my adventure began. I started up a new game and picked Brick, because he is, of course, the tankiest of the four. God damn right. I played through the game up to the fight with Sludge once again, this time armed with a new strategy. One that I had meticulously thought out. I ran it past multiple people, experts in this game. Why are you asking me? I never played this game. I was confident in this strategy, but I knew it wasn't perfect. The execution was critical. The only way it could go wrong is if I failed to perform its precise steps and inputs. I wish I could say it was pure skill, but if I'm being honest, I got lucky. Speaking of lucky, it was time to meet him in the... Oh god. Time to go to my favorite location, the Doll Headlands. Yes, I love this part of the game! Nothing interesting happened at the Doll Headlands because the Doll Headlands suck. I hate this location. The cars instantly kill you if they hit you. The side quests are boring and trash rewards, except Skagzilla, I really like that quest. And Mad Mel is the most poorly designed boss fight in the entire franchise. Don't at me. <clears throat> 
Sorry about that. I defeated Mad Mel through the power of cheese and made my way to New Haven. Lightning round. I met a lady with half a face, then I met Tannis, fuck you Tannis, then I met Earl, fuck you Earl, then I killed Crom, then I killed some dude and his brother, then I went to Old Haven and almost died, then I killed a vagina, then I went back to Old Haven and almost died, then I killed a guy on a thing? Then I realized the run was almost over. I was so close to the finish line. It was at that moment that I decided I wasn't going to lose. I needed better weapons and I knew exactly where to get them. I fast traveled to the Tartarus station to do the Claptrap DLC. There's a loot room at the end of the storyline that can be farmed for amazing loot. I was the correct level for the missions because they scale to your level, so I decided it was a good idea to give it a try. God damn it. Do you know what this means? I have to go back to the goddamn doll head This wasn't working. I had four games to get through, and in three runs I hadn't even beaten the first one. A single mistake could easily mean death. So I decided to do something that I should have done from the beginning. Exploit glitches! There's a glitch involving the challenges in this game, specifically the challenge Merchant of Death, which gives you 20,000 experience if you sell 1,200 items. Here's the thing, if you sell an item, you can buy it back for the same price, which you could use to sell 1,200 items in about 10 minutes if you just kept selling and buying back the same stuff. But the developers avoided this by making it so if you bought back a sold item, the number of items you've sold in terms of this challenge would get reduced by the number you bought back. This creates a glitch that is even more broken than the problem they were trying to avoid. If you sell exactly 1,200 items, you get 20,000 experience. If you buy back one of those items, the game thinks you've only sold 1,199 items, but you keep the experience. If you leave the game and come back and then sell one item again, you get the experience again, and then you just buy back the item. Keep doing this over and over again, and oh, I'm level 37. And I haven't even turned in the Three Balls mission yet. Nice. So it turns out Borderlands is pretty easy when you start the game four levels higher than the final mission. So, uh... Here's the sped up footage of me fighting the final boss. And just like that, it was over. I beat the game without dying a single time. Well, time to play Borderlands 2.